Hello, everyone. Thank you for participating in our today's seminar. Thanks God it's a seminar again, right? Of course, thanks for the uh, efforts that the government has been spending from uh, the beginning of the uh, pandemic. We should mention this, of course. Uh, my name is Yahya, and I will be the speaker, one of the speakers of uh, today's seminar. And as you know, we'll, we will speak about the integration of DJI drones with uh, UGCS software and how we can benefit from the artificial intelligence that uh, UGCS uh, has been investing and uh, uh, using with their software. So I have with me my colleague uh, Favel, and he will share with me the, a part of, the, uh, of this seminar. So um, let me introduce myself. My name is Yahya, and I work at Advanced Media as a creative solutions engineer in creative solutions department. And before we start, let, let us give you a brief uh, introduction about uh, our companies. Uh, AMT Advanced Media established in 2002. The main focus uh, was in finding solution related to media uh, products, uh, videography, audio, uh, lighting, and so on. And Advanced Media was one of the first companies that start to invest, to invest in drones technologies. And uh, on top of that, we are a DJI, an authorized DJI distributor, and we have a service center for DJI products and for the other brands as well. Uh, Pavel, if you'd like just to yes, sure. come over for a little and just uh, tell us about your company as well, please. Absolutely. Thank you, Yahya. Sure. Good morning. Uh, NNTC has been established in Dubai about five years ago, and we are the part of an uh, international group which with headquarters in Russia. Our head company, Krak, is operating in Russia for the last 26 years, and currently it's uh, one of the biggest IT systems, in the systems integrator in the country. We do have operations in uh, Turkey, where we run a cloud data center for local companies, mainly for financial sector. We have an office in Bahrain who is focusing on uh, IT security operations. And here in Dubai, NNTC is focusing on new technologies like uh, artificial intelligence, facial recognition, drone management, and uh, many others. Virtual reality is one of the strongest uh, expertises we have. Uh, one, of the, one of the reasons why we're here today, in our group we have a company called SPH Engineering. They're located in Latvia. It's a European established company. Their only job is to develop the product related to software products related to the drone management. Basically, they developed uh, UGCS software, which is flight uh, planning, mission planning, flight automation software. Uh, UGCS also is being used for drone shows. It's one of the interesting pieces that is the same technology, which is actually applied to the control of hundreds and thousands of drones at the same time. And uh, Atlas is an AI tool for the data processing, which gathered from the drones. So that we will cover this today, uh, a bit later, once Yahya finishes with the hardware piece. Sure. And that's basically, that's it. We, yeah, in the five years, we managed to do some nice stuff in this region too. So let's, let's do more. Thank you, thank you, Pavel. Um, DJI itself, we should uh, give uh, a little time to speak about DJI as well. DJI established in 2006. The main focus was in uh, uh, manufacturing the, uh, the flight controller of the uh, helicopters for hobbyists. And then time by time, it uh, kept on developing. And the turning point of DJI was in 2013 when they introduced the Phantom series. It was an all-in-one uh, solution from DJI. Then they introduced the Mavic series. And now in 2021, they are in the top. They have a lot of solutions in terms of industrial or uh, photogra fo videography, photography, and in terms of uh, consumer as well. So as we know, the drones are being used in almost, in almost every field right now. Uh, we are in 2021. Uh, we have people, we have inquiries from uh, every, every, every field like uh, for the oil and gas, for the inspection, for the photogrammetry, for the surveying, um, for the entertainment as well. There is a lot 
of uh, usage of the drone and it's you know, because it is a powerful tool and it's been using as well in the agriculture for the crop monitoring uh, as well. So if we are speaking about a solution, so a solution from a drone should be with three mandatory parts. The first one is a platform, which is the drone, the body, of course, and the second one is the payload, uh, which is the uh, camera or the sensor. Sometimes it's uh, uh, mounted separately. Sometimes, sometimes uh, it is inbuilt with the drone, like the Phantom or the uh, Mavic Enterprise series. And we have, on the other hand, the software, which, is, which have two sides. One is for mission planning, if we want to fly, if we don't want to uh, fly the drone manually. And the other hand, we have uh, the data processing software. In our case, we can use DJI Terra or uh, UGCS uh, Atlas uh, to be more specific. Um, so if I want, since we are speaking about how to make the surveying smarter with a drone, if I want to define the surveying in just one slide or one to two minutes, it will be not, not enough, of course, because it is a huge field. It is very complicated. But to summarize it up, the surveying, the main point of the surveying is to collect the data from the ground in order to have it for planning, for measurements, uh, for constructions, and so on. And the photogrammetry is a branch from the surveying itself. Uh, the photogrammetry is a branch from the surveying and it's been used from a long time. It's, it's not something new. It's been used using the satellites, the airborns, and uh, rec recently they started to invest, invest in uh, uh, drones or uh, to be more, uh, in general speaking, uh, in UAV, and manned uh, aerial vehicles. And the photogrammetry is photogrammetry, meaning photometer. So I'm able to have measurements from a photo, right? So uh, this is a good example of, the, uh, of a photogrammetry using a drone. In this video, we can see um, a topographic mapping. This is a DJI Terra software. And this is a 3D uh, reconstruction from uh, the software itself. We, we have the full. Uh, control, we can take measurements, we can uh, have a 3D model of a building. Uh, so you have now a um, digitalized world from the, from the real, digital, digital uh, version from the real world, right? The photogrammetry application or the surveying application, they are a lot. We can use it in topographic mapping to have a topographic map that is showing uh, hills, mountains, uh, villages, towns. We can use it in the cadastral surveying to show the boundaries of a property, uh, of a properties, for example, for a town. We can use it for construction, agriculture, for crop monitoring, health, uh, geological investigation, uh, accident reconstruction. There is a lot of uh, application that we can benefit from uh, the drone itself using the photogrammetry applications. Uh, this is an example. We have here the cadastral survey. Uh, from here, we, we took this uh, model from a drone, then we took it to uh, other third-party software to just uh, highlight the, uh, the, properties, the properties of each uh, house, for example. And we have another example of a 2D. This is 10 square kilometer from a drone. Um, not playing. It seems like ah, this is ten square kilometer from a drone. This is amazing. You can you can you can cover this area in just working in one working day using this drone with the P ones that I will speak about uh, in the next slides. So yeah, uh, the studies showed that a 120 hour of work from the traditional surveying, I can do it in only 16 hours using a drone. So thus I'm enhancing the efficiency, I'm reducing the cost, I'm enhancing the safety, and I'm having a, a digital powerful insights that I can use it uh, 
uh, like I said, we have now a digital copy from the real world, from the real world, right? Um, what we can get from a drone, we can get obviously a lot of data because there is a lot of solutions, a lot of payloads that we can mount uh, using this drone. Uh, we can use um, an RGB camera to have uh, 2D or 3D models. We can use a LiDAR solution to have a, a 3D pointy cloud. We can use a thermal solution to have a thermal map. And we have the multispectral solution that uh, is being used to uh, monitor the crop health. This is for agriculture, purely for agriculture uh, purpose. So I want to focus on three uh, solutions in this seminar. We have the M300 with a different solutions and we have the portable solution which is the Phantom 4 RTK. The Matrix 300, and I can describe it that it is the most powerful drone in the world right now because it's combining the performance with the intelligence with the safety to give you this lovely powerful drone. It can uh, you know, fly to up to 55 minutes with no payload, but still this is something remarkable from DJI. It have an omnidirectional sensor to increase, to enhance the safety. It, can, uh, it has an IP rating of 45, so water and dust proof, and it can take at the same time three payloads, increasing the possibilities of the solution that you are willing to have from a drone. So, um, amazing, amazing drone. And of course, it has the RTK uh, antennas to just uh, make the drone uh, more accurate and more stable while uh, flying. For the, 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 the photogrammetry solutions, we have the new payload from DJI, which is the P1. I have it here. DJI P1, uh, now P is, stands for photogrammetry, obviously. So this payload is made purely for photogrammetry missions. It comes with 45 megapixel, full frame sensor size, and uh, it, is, it, is, it, it is compatible with three available, for now, three available different lenses, uh, increasing the possibilities of the scenarios that you are flying with the drone. Uh, like we have the 24 millimeter, we have the 35, and we have the 50. Uh, the, uh, the package comes with the 35 millimeter, which is, uh, we, we can use it in almost uh, every scenario with uh, a photogrammetry mission, like in the low elevation, in the high elevation, it, it will work with us. Um, the, the, in the other hand, we have the LiDAR solution. So we have the photogrammetry and the LiDAR solution. Uh, we, we don't have it, unfortunately, the L1. Uh, we can see it from here. Uh, it's uh, the, the, the concept of L1, of the LiDAR. So we have uh, a pulses, a pulse will uh, emit from the emitter and it will mount, it will bounce off an object. The sensor will measure the distance and we will mark uh, a point in this distance. So we have a point clouds from uh, the result. So the L1 supports three returns, meaning that each pulse will penetrate objects. Of course, it have to be uh, you know, not every object, it have to be like a glass or leaves, uh, but uh, and this is amazing. The L1 solution or the LiDAR solution is amazing in the vegetation scenarios, since we, we will get uh, a triple return from the payload itself. So we can like measure the vegetation height. There is a lot of uh, applications that we can use uh, with the LiDAR. And here is uh, a video for a building. <coughs> this, been, this is for the DJI. They are working on it still. So. And um, a nice feature that you can consider while you, if you want to use the L1, that it's not dependable on the light environment, right? Because it's using laser. So you can have missions uh, during night, for example. If you want to fly it in the 
uh, normal days, uh, it have an RGB camera as well. We can use it for two things. We can use it to colorize the data because the point cloud are like black and white. So we can colorize it using the RGB camera and you can use it as a photogrammetry solution. So because it, it is 20 megapixel, one inch sensor. So we can consider you know, with L1, now you have both solution, LiDAR and photogrammetry. Uh, for the last product that I want to speak about is the Phantom 4 RTK. This is an entry level for the photogrammetry, the portable solution. It has a 20 megapixel uh, camera, one inch sensor size. It can fly at up to 30 minutes. So this is, uh, if you're looking, if you're not so professional in the photogrammetry uh, or surveying, this is the entry level solution from DJI. And it supports uh, RTK because it has the RTK uh, antenna as well. So from here we can see if we want to, to go the, uh, to the entry level, uh, you, you can choose the Phantom 4 RTK, go to the right if you want something more efficient. So, um, Pavel, yes. uh, I believe like if we want to have the uh, high accuracy output from a drone photogrammetry mission, uh, we, we, we have to mission plan the, uh, we, we have to plan the mission very good in, in a very professional way. So I believe UGCS will help us achieve uh, this, right? Yeah, sure. I will show it later on the live system. The idea when you plan a photogrammetry uh, flight, the most important is to understand what GSD you want Please. to achieve, right, the resolution. So the beauty of UGCS as a software for that, that the photogrammetry flight planning in UGCS has been done in just a couple of clicks. All you need to, go, to know is a payload and the resolution you want to achieve. And then just in two clicks it will be shown. We'll do it live, just let's... Please. Well, let's finish that. Okay, thank you. Sure. So, yeah, uh, going back to the drones, I mean, drones are very nice uh, devices which help you to do a lot of tasks, right? The, the only interesting thing when you look into the current industry, and what, uh, correct me if I'm wrong and how does it look for you currently, uh, most of the customers we meet so far is basically getting a drone hardware and getting a pilot and then start the operations. And that's what you see on the slide. This is typical operations which we see in our customers today. So it's a basically manual flying, manual processing, manual reporting. Yes, it's still more efficient than many other ways to do the job, but the question is, can it be done really better? What we usually offer is to automate two pieces of this process, to automate the flight planning and flight uh, execution to make sure that the uh, flights are executed constantly without errors and uh, automatically so the pilot is just becoming a supervisor in this case. And the second piece is say much smarter pieces. So during the flight we will collect the data from different sensors. It can be cameras, LIDARs or some other sensors which we can integrate with the drones. And the second piece is the most actually time consuming, right? Imagine simple example you flew the, say, five, six square kilometers of the territory and you have, I don't know, 15,000 pictures. Now you need to find an object on this 15,000 pictures to count, for example, number of buildings. The question is, if you do it manually, how much time it's going to take? It's basically the analysis engineer has to manually look through 15,000 pictures uh, marking the buildings and reporting them somehow. But what, what if we need more complex tasks? It's not just accounting. For example, we need to classify the buildings. So we need to say, okay, which buildings are new and which buildings are old to sort them according to the location or to the groups or to the areas. So that really becomes a kind of enormous task. Yeah, you did the flight very well. It was quick, right? Five square kilometers, maybe the pilot did it in a day. But the, but the engineer who is analyzing it and reporting it back to the uh, concert department, basically these guys will spend another two, three, four weeks to complete the report. So what we do with Atlas is we basically use an AI capability of the modern computers and software to make sure that we can automate this process of object detection, process of the change tracking, process of the mapping, stitching, and all these things together to make sure it's quick. 
And the most important, we can set up custom reports. So for example, if I want to know the number of date palms in the area, or I want to know the number of diesel generators installed in the area or over the facilities, I can automate the report and just with one click in 10, 15 minutes, the system will give me an answer. So that's, that's the whole concept. So basically what we implement at the end of the day, and that's what you see on the screen, is a complete pipeline from the flight planning piece to the final report, which can be delivered to the concerned departments. So typically, this pipeline is being, being set up in a drone department or drone group who is responsible for that. But that's complete thing from A to Z, just from getting the task from the department who is interested in the data to giving them a complete report in a matter of days. So that's, that's two tools which we are going to use. Uh, if you look at the tools itself, so UGCS is a pretty much uh, simple piece of software. It's been on the market for the last five years and we sold thousands of copies worldwide. It's been used by the smaller companies of two, three people only who is doing simple inspection jobs. And it's been used by the huge inspection companies like one of the biggest operators in the United States who are inspecting about 45,000 telecom towers in the, in the country. Uh, it's, it's all done by means of UGCS. Sometimes we, for bigger customers, we really customize it. For example, if you have the requirement to have some unique feature, we can add it because we are the, basically the developer of that. We own the source code, so, and many customers do ask for that. Um, if you look at the features of UGCS, the main thing is that it's a basically flight uh, mission planning tool, which is completely 3D. It's uh, really immersive. Um, it's uh, very simple to use. There are a lot of flight uh, planning tools which are predefined, so it's not just a waypoints which you put manually. I just, just give me a second, I will share the, the, the real system so I'll show you what can be done. Um, it takes about a couple of days for the pilot or operator to learn how to use it. And actually, even on the first day, after two, three hours, the, the person can easily fly automatically with that. Uh, we do support any drone, including DJI. And DJI, obviously, obviously as a market leader, is a main support and thing. But we do support all the other brands. We support Parrot, Lockheed Martin, open source like Ardu Pilot and uh, P, uh, Pix Hawk based drones. Uh, it also can be used as a command and control center. It's one of the versions of the software that allows you to have one centralized management for all drone operations with video streaming. And with Yahya, we will show you how the video of streaming course. works today. Uh, just to one thing which we are definitely proud of, UGCS has the lowest latency in the video streaming from DJI drones. In a, in a good environment, we can deliver better than 200 millisecond latency in a video stream, which makes it possible to use it for the real-time sur uh, surveillance and uh, security operations. So like, if you, if you run in a security department who wants to secure a perimeter of the area or whatever, that can be a real, a real case. Um, uh, one of the examples of users of this is Dubai Police, who is using exactly the same software for the uh, command and control center with video streaming. Uh, um, what else? Yeah, there are lots of tools like uh, fly, no fly zone management, um, uh, post flight log anal analysis, so you can see what the pilots actually did in the, pi in, the, in the last flights. You can see all the flights recorded. So it's, it's, it's quite sophisticated in terms of the functionality. It also has a simple mapping capability. There is a special module, for example, um, if you, normally you rely on uh, public available map sources, but the problem with the sources, they are not really high resolution. And if you really need to plan some precise mission, for example, to fly in front of the wall of the building, obviously it's impossible to do with the public map sources because the resolutions are low. UGCS has a built-in mechanisms which can build high resolution maps from the same drone you use for the main service. It's just make a small area scan and get a high resolution map inside. And you can connect the source into the system. It also works with elevation maps. So it's just complete, complete thing. Let me show you uh, how does it look like. It's really uh, simple and I like the way it's really l works. What you see here is basically the main interface. It's a client. Uh, this client is uh, connected to UGCS server. So it's, it's a centralized architecture where you can have multiple, uh, multiple clients connected. Yeah. Yeah. 
where is, no worries, where you can have multiple, multiple clients connected to one centralized system. And that's how basically command and control center is implemented. So we, we, we can have, um, we can have one centralized system with all the flight routes, with all the flight logs, and uh, with all the maps, and uh, multiple operators can actually work on it. So just to give you an idea how it looks like, this is Al Qudra Lake, so it's not far from here, Dubai. Um, if I want, for example, to do the photogrammetry scan of this lake, so all I need to do is just, is just to create a new flight route and uh, select the type of the drone. I will use emulator for now because we, can, we obviously can't fly in this room. <laughs> uh, so these are parameters, the basic parameters of the route, which, uh, which, which can be uh, set up like the maximum, maximum permitted altitude, the uh, starting point of the drone above the ground, uh, actions on the different, different safety actions, they've been accounted here. Like there are a lot of safety features to make sure that the flights are safe. We have a lot of geofencing, no fly zones. We have different actions of, uh, for example, on the loss of uh, con uh, connection with a drone, loss of GPS, battery discharges. All the safety features and automation is being managed here. In fact, after five years of experience, we definitely, you know, our customers did have an accident, right? Because of the different safety features. Sure. Uh, it's, it was a long route to the development. Today, all these accidents were accounted and managed through the settings. So you can really predict a lot of things which can happen to the drone and to make sure that it's safe. Uh, yeah, so this is how, been, uh, how we create the uh, safe. We want to, uh, I mentioned about automation of photogrammetry. That's how photogrammetry flight route is being automated. All I need to do is just to show the area, uh, say like this. And that's it. And then I say, then I select the payload. Currently it's emulation of GoPro here. Kind of simple thing. Uh, and I want to set up the resolution, right? So the resolution per pixel of, uh, on, the, on the ground. Uh, the camera is being controlled automatically, so the pilot will not do anything actually. The system will do everything automatic. What you see now, the system is actually automatically built the flight route and it's ready for use. Uh, um, you can set up the overlap of the images, so to make sure that the stitching and photogrammetry restoration tool will work well. Uh, one of the things here is to say where do we fly, above ground level or above mean sea mean level. Sea if we do the flight around mean sea level, you are also getting the elevation profile of the, of the, of the area. Not only the flat stitched map, but also you can get three-dimensional elevations from the same data, uh, which is very useful if you want, for example, even in UGCS, public sources are not really available with elevation, not many. So like this lake, you see now the area is flat, right? If we do scan it with AMSL flight and we reconstruct the map from the drone data, we will have complete three-dimensional view of this place with a high resolution, which can be used for later service. So that's no brainer. The route is ready. We just can uh, move it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we just uh, now take the drone, upload the route into the drone. Um, it goes to the first waypoint. If the waypoint is, is a little bit in different locations, there is also a way to add the starting point manually to make sure that you, you are starting the drone in the right place where you want it to be started. Um, even if you don't mark this route, it's very simple. The, wherever you place the drone, it will fly to the first waypoint, but to make sure that there are no obstacles. Uh, yeah, then we pray, uh, click arm and auto mode. At this point, my pilot job is done. All I need to do as a pilot, I just need to supervise how the drone flies. That's very simple. And in several minutes, the photogrammetry scan will be finished. The drone will land. We can get the data and process it in, in, in Atlas or any other data processing tool. So that's really that simple. Uh, there are lots of tools for the flight planning here. There is a standard area scan. Uh, you can do the circle scan uh, around the object. Uh, you can do the perimeter scans. It's all the flight planning tools which are available here. One of the unique features we have is a facade scans. Facade scans can scan the vertical facades of the buildings or you can scan the chimneys or towers uh, to fly around it. So it will, it will go up and down to get the pictures of the, 
of the object. Uh, corridor mapping, for example, if you need to map very wide road, which is 100 to 200 meters wide, or maybe the area, it will be like a wide corridor which will be mapped by the drone in a, in a snake manner. Uh, there are two tools specifically designed, and that's, that's an interesting story behind that. There are uh, this creeping line tool and um, uh, expanding square tool was specifically designed by the customer request several years ago. There is a very large uh, non-profit organization in Russia which are basically looking for the people who got missed. And, you know, the country is big. People got missed in the forest. Sometimes kids got missed in the, in the, in the forests. And this organization is looking for the, for the, the searching people until they die, right? So they specifically asked us to add two tools into UGCS for the search and rescue. The scraping line and expanding square are the most official, efficient flight planning tools in, in the search and rescue operations. By the way, if you, if you think about what they use, they use Phantom drones, mm -hmm. mainly phantoms and mainly uh, Mavic Enterprise with thermal cameras, just to deploy many of them at the same time in the search area and uh, we see in a day or two because basically the time is counting by hours. And they basically scan everything around to make sure that they can't find people. It's Uh, from different places, like uh, in a, in a layers, you can see the you can see it's here. Uh, you can add your own ones, as I mentioned. Uh, there is an integration with ADSB receiver to make sure that you are not interfering with the real aircraft. So the the real aircraft, if you connect ADSB receiver to UGCS, you will see real aircraft of, uh, on the on the on the same maps around, along with your drone operations. And uh, also, there are lots of uh, tools to see the recorded flights, like uh, what pilots were doing in the past, so statistics and so on. So that's that's very straightforward. Should we uh, should we take a look at the video streaming now? Of course. One quick question: also, yeah. What happens when the drone runs out of battery in the middle of the mission? There are multiple settings here. It's 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 a part of the safety settings which I mentioned already. So there are there are ways to. Uh, return drone to the starting locations, or there are ways to uh, land the drone in the location you want you wanted to land. And uh, once you land, you can replace the batteries. And the good news is that the system will continue the flight from the same from from the from the last point where the where the drone stopped. So it basically allows you to have one very long mission and just to replace the batteries at one place at the charging station and the mission will continue from the same route. We recently did some of this exercise. We were scanning the water treatment plant in Alvarsan for Dubai municipality. And uh, that was exactly this the case. It's a big plant, like kilometer, more than kilometer long and kilometer wide. It takes basically a lot of time. So it, it took us about probably six hours to do that. But the operations were done from one single point. We were basically sitting in one place and just changing the battery. The drone would come, land, we change the battery, in two minutes it goes again. It was, it was really very, very quick. It, yeah. Okay. Can I know the expected time to complete? Yes, absolutely. You, you can watch it in the, in the parameter of the route. If you look at the, this window, what you see here, you see the distance the total distance of the route, you see the estimated time of uh, completion, you see the elevation profile available from the maps, and uh, obviously it depends on the speed of the drone which you set up in the scanning tool, right? So it's, it's all there. So it's obviously you, you will know exactly. You would know all the altitudes which are calculated. You see, this is photogrammetry tools, right? The altitude of the drone is automatically calculated by the system. It's not me who said, who said it, right? Depends on the resolution and payload. So you see all the elevations here above mean sea level, above the ground. So it's all, it's all calculated. You can see that. Yeah, number of waypoints, all this stuff is here. Any more questions? Uh, 
So there are, that's a combination of both functions from the drone side and from the software, right? So we are one thing which I want to mention here, UGCS is not controlling a drone in real time, right? It's an autopilot of a drone which actually flies, right? What we do, we prepare the flight routes for the autopilots. We, we do not actually need a connection between the drone and the UGCS when it's operating. I mean, Illogical, right? We, we, we do want to have it to monitor it, but it's not necessary. So mainly obstacle avoidance is on the drone side. It's a function of the drone. And I think M300 in this is one of the, the best machines available in terms of the obstacle avoidance. But the software accounts for that. So if, if the drone has obstacle avoidance capability, the software will know about it. So it can be managed. Any, anything else? Yeah? Just, just a second. Because we are live as well, so ah, okay. if you just... Uh, uh, there, there are uh, situations that we fly in the mountains, yes. or, and then we uh, would be disconnected to the, com uh, with the uh, drone. Yeah. So is there any option that we can uh, fly without uh, connection? So it flies without, uh, when it loses the connection with the drone, it starts continuing the uh, mission. Yes, so here is, here is the thing. When you create a flight route, you can see it on this, on this particular screen. So action on a loss of RC, right? So basically it's an action of the drone which you set up on a loss of radio connection. You can go home, you can land, you can continue, you can wait, or do not do anything. So it's like it's your selection. You can fly without the connection. Uh, yes. can, is that possible to give them the time, for example, 60 seconds, continue 60 seconds and return, or uh, 120 seconds. Yeah, yeah, this has been set up here. So basically, you uh, in, in a drone profile, if we go deeply deep ah, into okay. the configuration, in a drone profile in yeah. UGCS, you can set up the timeout. If the connection is lost, how much time should pass before, before the drone will take specific action? Correct. So typically, if you are flying in the mountains and you do know that the connection can be lost, right? Yes. You just select the option, then you continue the mission. And that's it. But obviously in the mountains, when you fly like this, you need to have a precise elevation profile, not to collide course, with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's second thing. But again, it can be done even in UGCS. You can do the mountain scan from the top. Correct. And then just make the map with the elevations and plan, plan the mission accordingly. Or another thing which we do, and that's very specific to, to what we do in, uh, with SPH, uh, for DJI drones, we have a true terrain following system. We basically install the radar sensor on the drone itself, integrate with the drone's uh, hardware, and uh, in UGCS there would be an option to say, I want to fly precisely at five meters. And it won't depend on the maps. It will fly exactly at five meters altitude above the ground level. Oh, okay. Without the, without the collision. Thank you. Yep. Then you need an extra hardware on the drone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we do install the extra radar, which looks down. We use it a lot with uh, ground penetrating radars because ground penetrating radars require very low altitude flights, like half a meter. So it's, that's exactly the point. And it can be altered, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the video streams. Before we switch mm -hmm. to Atlas. We, we have Atlas left and uh, yeah. Should I disconnect for now? Uh, excuse me. Uh, I was expecting you to show us the result of the, the output in which format? In uh, drawing format, AutoCAD, or BIM, or which? Uh, yeah, so that would be the next piece in Atlas, right? So at this point, so, so if you think about UGCS, UGCS is just a flight automation tool, right? So the data is being collected by the drone, it's a format of the drone. Right, so if we fly with pictures, if we, if we collect the pictures, those are the pictures which you set up in a drone configuration. Uh, later, when we stitch the map, it can be GeoTIFF or any other mapping formats. Uh, that can be done either in UGCS for simple mapping or it can be done more complex in Atlas. And there, there are lots of more formats to be out. But generally, we do rely on the drones. Right, so because we do just automate the operations. So if you think about UGCS itself, it doesn't collect any data. It's just it's just a tool to it's just a tool to ask the drone to collect the data. Uh, 
There is one question for you um, from the live. Uh, somebody is asking, is there any type of a scanner to scan the bed seat? Uh, bathymetric. Yeah, there are. Uh, we we have we have the sensor for bathymetry, which is a point sensor. It's been used for the service of the harbors and uh, artificial lakes, but it's one point device. So that's that's integration we already have. It's basically one sonar which can go slightly into the water in one point and measure the depth. There are examples on the market, not from us, where but but there are examples of the when. When the sonar, the, the sophisticated sonar sensors being attached to the drone and dragged over the water, that that's the solutions are available. And it can be on a boat. It can be on a boat too. Yeah, yeah. By default, by the way, we do not really support drones in UGCS currently or bo boats. Boat. Yeah, boats and uh, rovers. But when it's done using the open source autopilots. We can do it even without modification. Basically, the, the route can be planned without accounting for an altitude, and then it will, it will operate. Or we can modify specific tools if needed. Amazing. Uh, so, let me plug the achievement yeah, cable. Yeah, sure. Sorry. I think it's now being connected to me. Oh, you have to... Should I, should I show it here? Uh, what is the passcode? Uh, zero, uh, not sure. And then it's connected to Xtron. Uh, I need the passcode. Zero, seven, eight, seven? No? Zero, seven. Work. Yeah, you can stream it. Actually, I think I can show it on mine. Mm -hmm. If you press the stream button, because it found my it's, server. Ah, uh, <laughs> disconnecting or? Let's see. Is this gonna work? How to connect it? When it's because of the always goes to you. <laughs> Probably goes to you. Streaming. Yeah, <laughs> streaming there. Okay. Cool. Uh, so just disconnect from your uh, yes. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. Amazing. So what you see here on the screen now is a basically the live video stream from uh, from the drone on uh, UGCS server installed on the Yahya's laptop. Uh, here, what you can do, you can check the latency. If you wave, you can uh, understand how quick it actually goes and. Uh, by the way, account for the delay also, which we have be between screen sharing, right? Because it's not it's not an HDMI connected monitor, so there is some delay between the laptop and the no, monitor itself. But the delay between the drone and the UGCS server is very quick. What I can do from my side on my laptop, I can actually connect. So since UGCS is just uh, doing the restreaming of the of everything which comes from the drone. We can connect external systems. Like typical example in the security operations, we do connect Milestone and Genetech video management systems, which are used by security guys for their CCTV operations. There is an integration for that. And uh, what do you think is an IP of us? 77, okay. Yeah. Uh, you so yeah, what we can do here and as you can see, Basically, I connected my laptop with just a video player, which takes the video stream from the video server of UGCS and shows it on my laptop. So you can do the same with any other system. If, for example, it's a command and control center, you can stream these videos to the main stakeholders, or you can stream it to the uh, real-time artificial intelligence processing systems from, yeah. from every drone you operate. So that's very, I mean, for us, it's kind of... It, very, it is simple, uh, yeah. to be honest, and there is... Um, no complica complexity in uh, using it. Plug and play. Can you locate the drone also? 
Huh? Can you see where the drone is? Like? Yeah, absolutely. One of the interesting things here that the video stream which we are taking from the drone is actually a georeferenced video stream. So if you take this video stream into the system, which, for example, ArcGIS can understand this true motion videos. So we do s stream true motion video from the drone. It's georeferenced, so you see exactly where the drone is. You see the each frame of the video in reference to the geolocation. It's a, it's all there. And plus, you can see the drone on the UGCS map. In fact, uh, uh, let's me let's me share my my screen for a second. All right. Yeah, what you see currently here, uh, you see this telemetry is actually coming to UGCS client is from, from this M M300 drone, right? So the problem is we are in the building, so there are no GPS coordinates currently, so we can't see this drone on the map because GPS is zero. But uh, if we take this drone out of the building right now, we will see the drone exactly on the map of UGCS, where, we, where is it located. So if you have many of them, you will have all of them. All the drones which will be connected to the system will be visible on the map in real time. Working, flying, or standing, whatever. But the only thing is it just has to be connected. We don't see it now because GPS is not working here. But that's one of the things. Mm. Uh, and as I'm seeing here, you can add uh, up to four uh, drones streaming as well? Yeah, uh, in, 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 in one video server, we do support up to four streams at the same time. Uh, the reality is that the system is completely scalable, so if you want to have, say, 10 drones, 15 drones, what we do, we just install this uh, video servers in parallel in the, in the IT infrastructure. It's, it's horizontally scalable, so you can have as many as you wish. Amazing. As I mentioned, we use this software also for the drone shows, so it's not only the video streaming of from many drones, we do control thousands and hundreds of them at the same time. So it's, uh, and it's the same core system, it's just different user interfaces, but the core behind is absolutely the same. Yeah, so any questions so far? By the way, is any of you have, any, have a requirement to stream the videos in real time? Or maybe to do something else for the security? Okay, so then let's move to Atlas. Atlas is a second right. piece of software we want to talk today. Uh, as I mentioned, Atlas is a basically AI tool to okay. yeah. a, Atlas is an AI tool to analyze the imagery which was collected by the drones in, in automatic mode. Uh, just to give you an idea from the beginning, uh, what is your what are you going to visible bands? We can also analyze thermals, multispectral, or any type of image which can be delivered by the drone. Like in this particular camera, you have both thermals and visible. We can process both. But I have an example from visible one. Uh, yeah, that's the first screen. How does it look like? It's a multi multi user environment, so you can assign users with different roles. For example, you can say you have an engineer who logged in. You have a pilot. Uh, I'm now looks like both a pilot and engin engineers. For example, I have the tasks from the other people here, but it's not assigned to me currently. So there is a basically a small task management system too. When the pilot logs into Atlas, he can see the tasks assigned to him by the analysis engineers or supervisors, and he will be able to mark the tasks as a complete or, or not. Uh, when, when I gathered the data as a pilot, I 